Everybody. Welcome to the Jade and Stitches show. We're going to do an area rug on the show today using the double strand method and a big hook. And a big hook and two strands held together equals big stitches. So this works up relatively quickly. And an area rug is just what you need to sort of freshen up a part of the house in January when you want to get a little bit of a facelift but not spend a lot of money. <laughs> This little area rug is about 32 inches or 80 centimeters in diameter, so it's a decent size. And you can plunk it next to your bed so you can step out on it in the morning. Or if you make it out of cotton like I am, you can even use it out in front of the bathtub or the shower um, to soak up your drips when you step out of the shower. <laughs> But before we get to making our rug today, I thought I would let you all know that we've done an update to our website and we have a new page there called Shop. And on the Shop page, you'll find links to some of the tools and supplies that I use here on the show. So if you're looking for something specific, you might find it there. So feel free to pop over and check it out. And we'll put a link to the website in our description box down below. So let's grab our yarn, grab our hooks, head on over to the craft table and make ourselves an area rug. In order to make our round throw rug, I'm using four ply worsted weight size four yarn in cotton. I have 400 grams of each color, which should be more than enough to complete this project. I need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and I'm using an eight millimeter hook or a size L. So a nice big hook so that we can make nice large stitches. And once you've got all that, we can get started. If you're buying yarn expressly for this particular project, then I recommend getting a couple balls of each color so that you can run two strands together a little easier. Um, if you've got big skeins like I do, these ones are 400 grams each, then you just want to roll yourself um, a nice sized ball out of the existing skein so that you can run two strands of the same color alongside each other. And that's what's going to give us um, a lot more thickness to this blanket, or I should say to this rug, and also allow us to make our stitches bigger and we can move along a lot faster. So if you've only got single skeins of the same colors, then you just want to take a moment and roll some of it into a ball so that you can work two strands alongside each other. Once you've got a second ball rolled from your first large skein, or you have both um, small skeins of the same color, you can grab the ends of both, hold them together, make yourself a cinch circle. You want to make your cinch circle a little on the large side because we're going to be working double crochets into it. So you're going to chain two more. You'll have a total of three chains coming out of that cinch circle. You should have something that looks like this. This chain three counts as our first double crochet. And into that cinch circle, you're going to carefully work 11 more double crochets. Once you've worked 11 more double crochets, so you have a chain 3 that counts as a double crochet, plus 11 more, that equals 12. Grab the short tails and cinch your circle shut. And then we're going to count up to the top of the chain 3. 1, 2, 3, there it is up here. And just slip your hook through it, to the top of it, and join with a slip stitch and you can weave in those short tails a little later on. And that is row one completed. Row two, because we want to start doubling up um, and making it lie flat, we're going to double up the stitch count by working two double crochet in every single stitch. So we're going to chain three to begin. 
Remember to try and keep control of those two strands. You want to always have two strands together. We're going to double crochet into the same stitch that we chained out of. So chain three counts, double crochet, and then one more in the same place. And this is the next double crochet stitch. So make sure you grab that full piece of the next stitch. You're going to work two double crochet into each stitch all the way around and you'll have 24 stitches at the end of row two. At the end of row two you should have 24 stitches. We're going to skip over the false stitch. That's that thing that looks like a stitch that our chain three comes out of. Find the top of the chain three and join with a slip stitch. All right, we're still expanding. Row three. We're going to chain three to begin. Double crochet into the same stitch that you joined in. So right there at the bottom of the chain three. This is the next stitch, this funny looking one, because it looks it's sort of slightly pulled because of where we joined. Work one double crochet into that. And then two double crochet into the next stitch. And one double crochet into the stitch after that. And that's the pattern. Two, one, two, one, all the way around. You'll have 36 stitches, including your chain three, at the end of row three. At the end of row three, you should have 36 stitches, including your chain three. Find the top of your chain three and join with a slip stitch. Now we're going to do a little bit of open work. We're going to chain five. This counts as a double crochet and two chains. Skip a stitch, this one right here, find the next one, and double crochet into it. Chain two. Skip a stitch, find the next one, double crochet. Chain two. Skip a stitch, find the next one, double crochet. And you can do that little pattern all the way back around to the beginning. Once you work that pattern all the way back around to the beginning, make sure that you chain your last two chains. You're skipping over the next stitch. This is the false stitch because our chain three comes out of it. Count up three chains and then join with a slip stitch to that third chain. And now we're going to change colors. So, grab your scissors, snip your yarn, and you can fasten off. Now, through, as we work this little rug, you're going to find that some some rows want to pull in, some rows maybe want to wiggle a little bit. Don't worry, because of the weight of this fabric, because we're doing a two-stranded project here, and um, um, the weight of it and the size of it, it's going to eventually even itself out and flatten down. Plus, once you use it, maybe wash it a couple times, it will definitely flatten down. But if you really want it to look perfect, you can always steam block it when you're done the, the project, and it should lie nice and flat because our stitches are big and heavy. That's the point of using the big, big hook. So once you've fastened off, we can join in our next color. Same as before, make sure you have two strands of the same color. We're going to make a slip knot. And now we're going to join to the top of our last row. And I'm going to join it right here where we fastened off just so I can keep all of my sort of starts and stops in the same place. I'm going to join with a slip stitch. I'm going to chain three to begin the row. This counts as a double crochet. 
and I'm actually going to try and work over top of my tails just so I can weave them in as I go. Into that chain two space I'm going to work two double crochets. We're going to double crochet into the top of the previous rose double crochet, so right into the top of that stitch. And then two double crochet into the next chain two space. And double crochet into the top of that other double crochet, so from the previous row. And if you've got little bits of pieces of your yarn still kind of strangling behind, you can either weave them in later or you can just snip them off if you feel you've, you've uh, worked over enough of it and it's not going to come undone. And that's your pattern for the rest of this row. Work two double crochet into every chain two space and a double crochet into the top of the double crochet from the previous row. And I'll see you back around at the beginning. At the end of row five and your first row of a new color, you should get right back around to the beginning, have two double crochets in that chain two space. This counts as a double crochet, so we're just going to find the top of our chain three and join with a slip stitch. There we go lay it down, flatten it out, and we can move on. We're still working double crochet, we're going to chain three to begin. Double crochet into the same stitch as joining. And now we work the new pattern. So that's the next stitch, remember it might look a little funny. Work one double crochet into that. And double crochet into the next stitch. And now we repeat. Two double crochet into the next stitch. And double crochet into each of the next two stitches. And that's the pattern. Two, one, one, two, one, one, all the way around and I'll see you back at the beginning. We're at the end of row six. You should have 72 stitches, including the chain three. We're going to join to the top of that chain three with a slip stitch. There we go. And we're still increasing, we're ever increasing. We're on to row seven now. We're going to chain three, double crochet in the same stitch as joining, double crochet in the next stitch, and it's that funny one, remember? and in each of the next two. Okay, so what we have so far, chain three counts as a double crochet, double crochet in the same stitch as joining, so that's two, one, 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 two double crochet into the next stitch, and double crochet into each of the next three. And that's your pattern. Two, one, one, one. Two, one, one, one. All the way around. I'll see you back at the beginning. At the end of this row, you should have 90 stitches. Find the top of your chain three. Join with a slip stitch. And now we're gonna do that little eyelet row again. So we're going to begin by chaining five, and that counts as a double crochet plus two chains. Skip the next stitch, 
find the next one, double crochet. Chain two, skip a stitch, find the next one, double crochet. And you can do that all the way around. Chain two, skip a stitch, double crochet. Once you finish that round, you should have 45 chain two spaces. Make sure that you chain your last two before you find the top of the chain three. Remember that chain five is a double crochet in two chains. So find the third one, join with a slip stitch, and we can change color again. So grab your scissors, snip your yarn, and fasten off. So I'm back to my nice pink color. I'm going to start with a slip knot on my hook. I'm going to join my yarn where I fastened off, so in that little hole right there. So that's a slip stitch to join. And now we're going to chain three. I'm going to try and work over my short tails and we're going to change up the pattern a little bit throughout these spaces. So in the first space you're going to double crochet twice. Double crochet into the top of that previous rose double crochet, so right into the top of that stitch. double crochet once into the next space. Double crochet into the top of the next stitch. Double crochet once into the next space. double crochet into the top of the next stitch and now we're going to start all over. Two double crochet into the next chain two space. Double crochet into the top of the next stitch. Once into the space into the stitch, once into the space, and into the stitch. So essentially you're always going to double crochet into the top of every stitch, but the spaces get treated a little differently. So you're going to work two double crochet in the first space, and then one, and one, two, and then one, and one, but you're always double crocheting into the top of the actual stitches as well. So that's how you're going to work that pattern for that row all the way around. I'll see you back at the beginning. At the end of row 9 you should finish with a double crochet in the last chain 2 space. Find the top of the chain 3 that you began the row with. Join with a slip stitch. You should have 105 stitches in total in that last row. Chain three. Double crochet into the same stitch as joining. And remember, find that next stitch. You want to double crochet into that. And a double crochet into the next three as well. So that chain three counts as a double crochet, which means you have two double crochet into the first stitch, double crochet into each of the next four, and then repeat. Two double crochet into the next stitch, and 
and double crochet into each of the next four all the way around and I'll see you there. At the end of row 10 you should have 126 stitches. Find the top of that chain 3, join with a slip stitch, and moving on to row 11, chain 3. This counts as a double crochet. Double crochet in the same stitch as joining. And now we're going to double crochet in each of the next five stitches. So remember the first one might look a little funny. Alright, and that is the new pattern. So, two double crochet in the first stitch, double crochet in each of the next five, double crochet twice into the next stitch, and double crochet once into each of the next five stitches. So, two into the next stitch, one into each of the next five stitches, and that is your new pattern <laughs> for all the way around of row 11. At the end of row 11, you should have 147 stitches. Find the top of your chain 3 and join your row. And now we're going to move into some eyelets. The eyelet pattern is going to change a little bit. We're going to chain 6. So this counts as the first three are a double crochet plus three chains. You're going to skip the next two stitches and double crochet into the third. There. Chain three stitches, skip two, double crochet, into the third. So we've changed it up a little bit. You're chaining three, skipping two stitches, and then double crocheting into the third. And when you get back around to the beginning, you should have 49, so 49 chain three spaces. When you get back around to the beginning, make sure that you chain layer your last three. Count up three on that first chain six you made and join with a slip stitch to the third chain. We're changing color again, so you can snip your yarn, fasten off, and grab your other color. Put a slip knot on your hook, join your color with a slip stitch in the same place that you fastened off your last color. Chain three. And into the first big space you're going to work three double crochet. Work a double crochet into the top of the stitch. And into the next big space, work two double crochet. Double crochet into the top of the stitch. and then three double crochet into the next space. So all the way around you're going to work a double crochet into the top of every stitch. 
But you're going to alternate between three double crochets and two double crochets, three double crochets and two double crochets, all the way around. Now don't worry, this isn't going to actually work out perfect, but it doesn't matter because we're getting close to the end of our little rug and the stitch count is going to change up a little bit, but it won't change the shape. So make sure you double crochet in the top of every stitch and alternate three, two, three, <laughs> and two. And I'll see you back at the beginning. At the end of row 13, you'll find that you finished with a three double crochet in the last chain three space, and you began the row with a three double crochet in the last chain three space. You should have 172 stitches. Just join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. Like I said, stitch count's gonna be a little bit wonky from here on out, but we're almost done. Chain three to begin the next row. This is now row 14. Double crochet into the same stitch as joining. So that counts as two double crochet in the same stitch. Double crochet into each of the next eight stitches. So your pattern will be two double crochet into the first stitch, double crochet into each of the next eight, and repeat. It's not going to work out exactly, but when we get back around to the beginning, I'll show you what to do to finish. All right, at the end of your last set of repeats, you should have double crochet into the next two, double crochet into the next eight, and that brings you up to having, see now I've done seven, you'd have eight, you'd have one stitch left. So instead of having one stitch left, we're going to actually make the last two stitches a double crochet two together. So the last repeat you have will be two double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into each of the next seven, and then double crochet the last two stitches together. So you work the first half of a double crochet in the first stitch, and then start and work the first half of the next double crochet into the next stitch, and then wrap and pull back through the three loops that should be on your hook. So you've double crocheted two together. Then you can join to the top of your chain three, And you should have a total stitch count of 190. So remember, when you double crochet two stitches together, that's one stitch. See the stitch across the top? So your total stitch count now at the end of this row should be 190. That's nice and even. We're back on track. We're going to do one more row of this lovely white color. Actually, two more rows, but one more solid row. <laughs> Chain three to begin. Double crochet into the same stitch as joining. That counts as two double crochet. And now you're going to double crochet into each of the next nine stitches. After that, you'll work two double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into each of the next nine stitches, and repeat that all the way around, and it should work out perfectly. We're at the end of row 15. You should have 209 stitches all together. Find the top of your chain three, join with a slip stitch, and now we're going to do another eyelet row. This eyelet row isn't going to work out perfectly. You're going to have one little stitch left over here, but you're going to skip over top of that. You're going to chain three. That's your double crochet. Chain three more. Those are your chain threes. Skip three stitches. Double crochet into the fourth. Chain three stitches, skip three stitches, double crochet into the fourth. And that's your pattern. Double crochet, chain three, skip three, double crochet into the next stitch. So there's your chain three, skip three stitches, find the fourth, double crochet into it, and repeat that all the way around. I'll show you what it looks like when we get back to the beginning. Once you're close to the end, or you have nine stitches left in that row, you're going to change up your pattern a little bit. So you're going to chain four after your last double crochet, 
skip four stitches and double crochet into the fifth. So it's going to give you a slightly longer, slightly larger space. And then you're going to chain four again. That gives you four more stitches to skip and then you can count up to the top of the chain three and join with a slip stitch. So you're going to have 53 of these big open eyelet spaces all the way around. Now I'm going to change back to my other color for the last row so you can either continue with the same color or you can fasten off now with me and change back to your other color. Put a slip knot on your hook and you're going to join with a single crochet in the same place that you fastened off. There we go. I'm going to work over my little short tails here. Into the first space you're going to work five double crochet. Once you've got five double crochet, find the top of the stitch from the previous row and single crochet into it. Into the next space, work five double crochet. And that's the pattern. Five double crochet into each big space and single crochet into the top of every actual stitch all the way around. This is going to give you a nice little floating scalloped edge. Once you've worked your last five double crochets into your last space, you should be back to the single crochet where you joined your yarn. Just slip your hook in there and slip stitch. And that's it! There's your little scalloped edge border, simple little border. You can snip your yarn, fasten off, and then grab your yarn needle and weave in all of your little tails. So if you have little extra tails sort of hanging around out the back of your rug, then take an opportunity to grab your yarn needle, weave in all your tails, and you're all finished. <laughs> in my other life, I'm an area rug model. <laughs> Anyway, that is an area rug. Super simple, in the round, lots of fun, and a cute little perk up for any particular part of your home or dorm or office that you feel needs a little something something for the blahs of January. I just love this little thing. I'm going to make a whole bunch more. And that is it for this week, everybody. So thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to pop over and check out the changes on our website, especially if you're looking for some tools and supplies. And we will see you again really soon on the Jade and Stitches Show. Thank you so much. Be safe, be crafty and have an awesome week. Bye.